to see who is walking in to be screened. Uh, we are told that uh, the next nominee to be screened is Mr. Godi Jedi Agba, um, who was born in Obuja in Cross River State uh, and has a first degree in international studies from Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and uh, has a master's degree in international law and diplomacy from the University of Lagos in Akoka in 1989. Uh, he has a book called Stepping Forward with Uti J.D. Agba, published by Bookman Publishers. And Mr. Agba captures his story while he was growing up. That talks about how he looked up to his father and shaping his life. And uh, what he has become today is a product, he says, of a very long plan. Uh, so he is uh, going to be screened shortly, has made his way into the chambers. Uh, already and of course we're looking forward to the questions that he will be asked he's already at the podium uh, looking forward to the questions that he's going to be asked and what answers he's going to be giving uh, to those uh, to those questions as they come and we could do that kind of congratulations after we would have completed our exercises either outside the the, the, the chamber or at our various houses so, uh, Mr. President, I just want to make this as a reminder to my colleagues that you should abide by the rules of the game that we have already set for us. Order, resolution. Order, resolution of the Senate. <laughs> Order. Thank you very much, Leader, for reminding us. Actually, you didn't need to come under an order. You could... Uh, even go ahead to remind the Senate the understanding we reach amongst ourselves that when nominees are screened and they are on their way to exit, we don't have to go and be shaking with them. You can even take adverts if you want, if they are friends or mentors or whatever, or we can visit them after we close. But maybe it's um, it's better we don't do that. So, your uh, leader is not an order. I don't think you need to have an order because, but this is an understanding and a reminder. And Senate Minority Leader, I'm sure you are in support of that reminder. Thank you very much. Well, distinguished colleagues, we have uh, Mr. Gwadi Jedi Agba, the nominee for Cross River State. Uh, who is on the podium. Uh, Mr. J.D. Agba, on behalf of my colleagues, you are welcome to the Senate Chamber. And you are, the copies of your CV have been distributed to all the senators here. Therefore, uh, we have read, but you still can go ahead to highlight those areas that you feel the Senate needs to take a special note of. Uh, in addition, if there is anything that you have omitted from your CV, you are at liberty to talk to those things. Once again, you are welcome uh, to this chamber and you can now address the Senate. Senate President, sir. Deputy Senate President. All principal officers of the Senate, distinguished senators, Ladies and gentlemen, I, I thank you, Mr. Senate President, for the opportunity to stand here and address these hello chambers. I first of all would thank God for giving me the opportunity for being in good health of mind and body to be here today. Otherwise, I may not have been here. I also thank Mr. President finding me worthy to be nominated to serve in his cabinet in any capacity. My CV is before all of you, I, I am aware, but I'd like to recognize the presence of the senators from my state, beginning with Senator Dr. Mrs. Rose Oko, Senator Geshom Basi, and Senator Sandy Ono. I also recognize the presence of other senators uh, from other zones with whom I know here, like my great friend Senator Ifan Yuba, Senator Greg, Senator 
Rosas, Okorocha. Thank you, sir. All right. My CV is before all of us. And uh, I'll just speak a few things. Oh, I forgot to mention Senator Dino Malay, my very great friend. Thank you, Senator Dino. I, I have served this country in several capacities. I first went to secondary and primary schools in my place called Ugoja. I went to secondary school in Merino, secondary school Ugoja in Cross River State. After finishing secondary school, I did A-levels, HSC. I finished in 1978, and uh, didn't get admission that year to university. So the next year, 79, I went to Zaria. I attended a school of basic studies, Zaria, for one year, after which I entered the main uh, university to study a BSc degree in international studies. I graduated in 1983, June 83, and did the national service in Port Harcourt. Head of crude, to the, the sales end, revenue was generated and went directly to the federal government accounts, federation accounts, without tampering. So crude oil sales, by, for, for instance, is not cash based. It is sold on letters of credit basis between the Central Bank of Nigeria, which is the receiving end, and the Federal, Bank of, uh, federal Reserve Bank of America. So nothing, no cash transactions take place instead of crude. It is um, instrument-based. If, uh, for instance, a crude oil allocate, is, is allocated to a, a company and they bought, they did not pay money to, Nigerian, uh, to any Nigerian bank. The Nigerian bank only served as a corresponding bank to confirm that this money is available in a bank in Europe or in America and it can be called upon. If, you don't, if that crude is lifted and within 30 days it's not paid, this money can be gotten from this bank, which is a reserve, which is a confirming bank in Nigeria. Also, I want to remind us that within the ten years, four years which I served, there was no question of non-remittance of money to the federation account. All the states shared money each month for the four years. I'll allow us to um, ask as many questions as possible now. Senator George Thompson Sekimo. Mr. President of the Senate Chair sitting, my distinguished colleagues, I am Senator George Thompson Sekibo. I represent Rivers Peace Central District. Two simple questions. Because of the area you are coming from, that is why I'm asking this question, to learn from you. On daily basis, On regular basis, we hear explosion of pipelines all through the country, especially in the Nanja Delta region, resulting in waste of our petroleum products, resulting in environmental devastation, and also consuming lives and properties. What do you think is the cause of this incessant explosion and what is your remedy to curb these excesses? That is question Explosion. number two. Mm. Question number two. We heard that you were retired five years earlier than when you're supposed to be there by Honorable Minister Dizeni. What actually happened? Can you enlighten this uh, chamber? Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Senator Ezumwa Inyouchi. Thank you, Mr. President, seated as the Chair. 
My name is Ezanwa Onyewuchi, Imo East Senatorial District. Uh, Mr. Nominee, there's no doubt that you've been a major player in the upstream sector. My question is, Nigeria runs a mono product economy. Do you think this is sustainable? The over reliance on oil, do you think is sustainable? If not, what ways can we diversify our economy? The second question for you is how do you assess the implementation of the local content policy? Do you have ways of achieving a better policy? Thank you very much. Minority Leader. Thank you. My name is Saini Abaribe Abia South. <clears throat> I'm also going to ask you a question based on your expertise. One of the biggest problems we have in budgeting in Nigeria is that any time the budget is brought to the floor, we are told to wait until they bring uh, what is called MTEF. And inside the MTEF is always the revenue sources stipulated. And we find that whatever is given to us as the price of crude on which the budget is based, after a short while, there will be an interplay between this Senate and the uh, and the executive once there is a disagreement in terms of the future price of crude which is which underlies the budget so i would like you to tell us having been in crude marketing as you said how we can have a seamless uh, operation of knowing in one year what our crude will be what so that when we are doing our job here in terms of the budget we will not have a difficulty in interfacing with the executive we would like to be uh, educated on that Senator Aisha Tudairo Ahmed Binani Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Aisha Fudair Lamed Nani, Senator representing Adama Center. Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues, I want to crave your I want to crave the indulgence of this Senate to allow me just one and a half minutes background to my question because this nominee is one that uh, Going by his CV, I see that he has spent like 21 years in, the, in an industry that is the economic backbone of this country. Yes. So much, I don't think you need one and a half minutes to read background. You may take a reasonable uh, time just to, to ask the question. Thank you, Mr. Nomini. Congratulations. Uh, early this month, NNPC issued letters of uh, awards for uh, contracts to exchange crude oil with refined imported petroleum products. That is whereby companies are allocated uh, crude oil supply for, import, for exchange. Uh, to, ex to deliver pet uh, refined petroleum product to NNPC. But in the light of the report of NITI, Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, it, it says that in the previous contract of same, there was a, rev a revenue loss of at least 600 million US dollars due to discrepancy in the crude oil supply and the refined product delivered. And he said that it has also identified 
and outstanding liabilities of about 490, 498 million US dollars in another operation from on the delivery of refined petroleum products and another 90 million US dollars through NNPC's use of lower or revised pricing at the point of payment instead of the higher price at the point of purchase. Even though NNPC announced that uh, in 2017 three crude oil firms have agreed to pay back 184 million US dollars for on the delivery of refined petroleum products. You and I and every member of this chamber know that this amount is infinitesimally meager compared to the revenue lost by this country in the uh, oil and gas um, industry. So going by your experience, assuming you are being confirmed by this Senate, and the Baba uh, said, man the petroleum ministry, what measures will you put in place to ensure that to, or to eliminate or eradicate totally this on the delivery, revised pricing at the point of payment, and discrepancy in the value of crude oil, crude oil supply vis-a-vis -vis the refined product delivered. Secondly, what will you, how will you tackle the sharp practices in the industry? especially in the areas of transparency and, account and accountability in, the, in mining the affairs of oil business activities from survey okay. to production to refining to marketing and meeting the demands of Nigerians and revenue generation to the country without any leakage. Thank you very much and I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair. My name is Ojun Zokalo, representing Abia North Senatorial District. My question will be if, Mr. Nominee, if you are able to make the Minister of State in the Petroleum. How are you going to allow us to refine all the two million barrels we are selling by a day? Because we are losing money by exporting those two million barrels instead of refining it here. And how are you going to use your office if Mr. President finds you worthy to be the Minister of State Petroleum to stop us from selling our crude on sea on a full basis? Because having been in crude oil marketing, I know that you know that we are being cheated by selling our crude oil FOB basis. How can we initiate to sell this crude oil on CIF basis so that all costs will be charged and will be charged of loading, will be charged of shipping, will be charged of everything so that we can get benefit of everything. Thank you very much. You can respond. Mr. President, sir, I'd like to start from the last question. Crude oil sales internationally is done on two bases. CIF, that's cost insurance and freight, as well as FOB, free on board. CIF means we are responsible for the cost of the, fuel, the crude, the insurance of the crude, and the freight, freight means transporting it. So if you come and buy a crude from Nigeria, Nigeria will provide a vessel, Nigeria will provide insurance for that cargo, and Nigeria will provide the um, cost. You pay the cost and we'll, we'll take care of all that. The danger in that is that, and the, the other one, free on board, is that you bring your vessel, you, you buy a crude, you bring your vessel, we load it. Once you put the tire in the knob and you pump into the vessel, you fill the vessel, as you disengage the knob, it becomes your property. If at the point of selling there's a bomb and you fail, your vessel sinks, it's your business. You've paid for, we have collected. It's your business. That came to force, you remember, when we were in the military regime, our, our country had many litigations. We were like a peria state. So any country that has problems with Nigeria can go to get into, um, arbitration from anywhere. Once you get arbitration and they said, 
Can she permit to use legal terms? Can she or seize them? They can seize any vessel, any of Nigeria's property anywhere. Crude oil is our mainstay. If they seize 10 of our cargoes, because the court, say, the court is sitting in Geneva or in America or in London, says, hey, um, did Nigeria is owing this man 10 million uh, or 200 million bucks of, uh, uh, of dollars of money, seize anything. They could, the first thing they'll go for is those cargoes that are on the high sea, which would generate them his money. So it was safer for us at that time, and it is safer, to sell on CIF because nobody can seize your vessel. Once we load your vessel and we take off the pump head, it becomes your property. What happens to it is no longer the liability of NNPC or the Nigerian government. It's not the property of the Nigerian government any longer. Whereas CIF holds us liable until the port of discharge. So if you load in Bonny and you are going to Amsterdam or Rotterdam or Antwerp, until you get to Antwerp and you discharge into the tank, and the man accepts that the, the calibration is okay, then liability stops being ours. So that's the disadvantage of both sides. Then, actually for ref grading, for refining our products, sale of products, you see, our refineries are in the least 50 years old. And any property or if a vehicle or vessel or machine that has 50 years lifespan, has lasted of 50 years, requires to be refurbished regularly, there are standards for required because turnaround maintenances. We have not done turnaround maintenances for a long time. The only one we did, we gave, it's like giving your Mercedes-Benz car to a motorcycle mechanic to service. You, you know what you get. That's what we did only once. So the, the turnaround required, the refineries require that you do turnaround and maintenance every two years. If you don't do that, you're not going to have maximum products from your refineries. So our refineries are old and indeed obsolete. However, refineries like refineries in India and Brazil are 70 years old. They last 70 years because they are uh, uh, periodically maintained. We have refused to maintain ours, so we are in that predicament. I have also, our refineries are configured to produce, to refine only one stream of food. Nigeria has 32 streams. What I call refinery, for instance, is, ref, is, prefer, is programmed to refine only bunny light crude. Kaduna refines only um, uh, heavy crudes and escravos. Uh, Wari refines only escravos. So, for Kaduna, for instance, we take escravos, and when escravos is not producing, we import heavy crude from Venezuela, we used to import from Venezuela, we take a cargo of light crude, which was our uh, sweet crude light, take it to the, to the port of Curaçao. Curaçao is a small, a big deep sea port in that area. And then they bring their own one cargo of heavy crude. We exchange by calibration, and then we bring it to, to Wari, then pump from Wari to Kaduna for refining. And that one line has not worked for 10 years, as I stand, I check to you. For 10 years, it has not happened because the pipelines were not, are not available, and the crude exchange program could not work. So, if we need to accept, um, to correct that program, we need to re 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 reconfigure our refineries to produce, like, for one refinery to have produced like three grades of crude. We have more products. It will, we will now shut up the, the, the reason for importing crude. If, for instance, we, we configure worry refinery to take in Ima, Escravos, and, and, and Kwaibo, we have, we have 32 crudes anyway produced by Nigeria. So if, 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 if worry pro, pro, processes three crude streams, Boni, uh, uh, Portacol processes three crude streams, and Kaduna processes three crude streams, we'll have more products locally. We won't need to import products, and therefore we'll bridge the gap between importing and at a shorter price and paying um, extra for those services, which we call subsidy. However, if we must get to that stage, we should first service refineries and reconfigure them. Reconfiguration is just an extension of the refinery to make it capable to accommodate three crude streams rather than one crude or four crude streams as you want it, which will solve our problems of importing products and get into the problems of we have today. If we have enough local products, we can wet the country enough sufficiently to be able to meet our market demands. Then we, I was asked a question about look, in some way called the local content, the distinguished nature called the local content. I prefer to call it Nigerian content. But it is Nigeria. We're not local. We're Nigerians. And it's for Nigerians. So the, the essence is to encourage 
more of our Nigerian companies and Nigerian um, citizens to participate in the oil industry, not just heavy uh, uh, participation. Even welders, you, if you, you'll be surprised to hear that welders are brought from um, Houston, from Paris, to come and weld undersea, underground welding. A welder earns $10,000 per month. $10,000 per month per welder who is brought from Houston to weld pipe. Whereas our boys are there languishing. If you teach them, tra train them to weld, they will do that welding very well. And the, the capital flight which goes to uh, France or to, to, to Germany or to Houston will remain in Nigeria. $10,000 for just welding or for a diver. That's, local con that's Nigerian content. And more Nigerian companies are being encouraged to participate in the downstream in, uh, upstream industry so that we'll be able to have enough employment for our staff and our own hands-on in it. Most of the laws we are operating today are obsolete. They were designed by the IOCs, uh, international oil companies, to service their interests. So we must revisit those laws to make them compatible with the Nigerian situation so as to be able to um, enhance uh, output and uh, optimize, optim optimize um, revenue generation from these sections. For pipelines, our pipelines are as old as our refineries, and pipelines are made of um, uh, metal. Crude oil is corrosive, so it corrodes. I've been used one same pipeline for 50 years or 45 years. It would certainly corrode. So when it's corroded, it's easy to penetrate. You, if you just hit it with a stone, you can, you can bore a hole and you can draw up pipe, and then the, it spills. It also, when there's crude oil, oil is pumped under high pressure. So with that pressure can bust a pipe, and env environmental degradation and all of that will happen. Apart from crude theft itself, but degradation due to aged pipelines. The solution to that, for me, is that today, in, the, in, in advanced uh, oil economies, there, there's, there are new systems of pipelining. We don't have to use those metal pipes to lay. They're highly calibrated um, fiber pipes, which you lay. To, it takes six hours to bow a hole on those pipelines. So by the time you spend six hours trying to bow just a pinhole, you, do, you, do, you, you, you will have suffered enough, you can't steal. Secondly, it won't bust to, to degrade our environment. These pipelines are laid and they are connected to a control room, which is somewhere else. As soon as there's a tamper on that pipeline, it triggers an alarm at the, uh, at the control room. And then uh, a drone will generate from that point and go to that place. It may not come with arms and fire. I'm not saying kill people. It comes with water, hot water, water. It goes that area. If, if a man is trying to steal there, they pump hot water. The drone will drop hot water on your body. And for God's sake, nobody wants to be burnt. One. Two, it will not bust our pipelines any longer because it's not corrosive. It is high fiber. So with, with our, if we relay our pipelines and, and reconfigure them with control rooms, we can easily check what's happening from wellhead production to, 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 to meter end and, and, and tank heads. So if we have that done, we don't have present problems with stealing fuel or broken pipes or uh, um, environmental pollutions. It will at least it will abate. Finally, about my career and my retirement. Yes, I retired voluntarily, as it were, from the, public, from the NNPC five years before my year of uh, retirement. For, first of all, I was G Group General Manager of Crude Oil Marketing. For some reasons, well, posting in the service is normal. You can be posted at any point in time. I was I was redeployed from crude oil division, marketing division to a newly created redundant position called business management. Good enough. That was good. Well, management has reasons to deploy anybody at any time. It was not as a result of fraud, discipline, or indiscipline as the case may be. Maybe I was required to do some things I would not have done. I don't know. But I was deployed and I went in there. Having stayed there and being redundant, I was still very young, and, and I'm still young and active. That can be satisfied too. So, in every way, yes, sir, up to now. Distinguishing it all. <laughs> so, I, 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 I was that way, and uh, the law, a, a law of politics came to me. I wanted to join um, the your trade. 
So I ventured into uh, politics. Into, uh, I retired and joined the gubernatorial race, and I failed woefully, which is, which is natural. You failed the first time, you failed the second time. You may have succeeded the third time, but I failed woefully, and I went back to my shelf and did to continue doing my farming. So they doing farming and stayed on the bottom back line and did what is called so you don't look. And by the grace of God, I find myself here to serve my country in whatever capacity I'm given to serve. That's Distinguished uh, colleagues, the next set will be Senator Matthew Rogide, Senator Tolo Adibi, Senator Dino Malai, Senator Said Al Kali, and Senator Ibrahim Mohamed Bomoy. In that order. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm Senator Matthew Rogide. I represent the good people of Edo South and Tela District. As the chairman, my distinguished colleagues, I want to pay your indulgence in congratulating my friend, my brother, Mr. Godier Agwa, on his nomination by Mr. President to be considered for ministerial appointment in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Senate has listened with a whole lot of attention. The very professional explanation that this nominee has given so far to all the questions that have been asked. If we have to do a proper assessment that is fair, it is clear that this nominee has knowledge. Deep knowledge about Oxford. And of course, just like one of my distinguished colleagues mentioned earlier, that you have spent 21 years all in crude oil marketing. Of course, crude oil being the mainstay of our economy, there have been practices about the, the sale of this product. To date, in fact, the militancy that we still see in the Niger Delta is attributable to this issue of people going to find out what is in the pipeline, the crude oil. There has been this practice they call topping. Topping. It's a sharp practice, no doubt. Of course, you must have heard of that. So, this Senate will want to know what is topping. Because that one attended. Of course, to, to preclude this country from getting its due share or its rightful share of returns from the sale of this product. I want you to look at that again, the backdrop of those that are responsible, particularly the companies that have been appointed to do our export I mean, inspection. They are very specific. It is gratifying to note that as we speak, None of these companies has any subsisting agreement with the government of Nigeria because their agreements have not, been, have not been renewed or revised. Therefore, this issue of topping comes to bear. So please, you will explain to the Senate. Number two, there has been a whole lot of controversy about subsidy. Even those who are sympathetic with us in international community have said, oh, remove subsidy. And for us here in Nigeria, this Senate, we have come up with several motions on this issue of refineries you just explained, vis-à-vis -vis the importation that we are doing of PMS. That again has robbed off of usons of money that we, have, that we have used for development in other areas. So, I want you to tell us very clearly, because if you are sent to the Federal Executive Council, you have, you, the onus is on you to advise the government what we should do about subsidy. That's 20 trillions of naira. And again, that is fraught with a whole lot of fraud. So what is your position on subsidy? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Chingwe College for this privilege. Senator Tolu. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Unfortunately, uh, he just answered, he just asked most of the questions I wanted to ask. But if I can ask uh, the nominee, um, Senator Asha, to ask you earlier that the differential in the supply of crude and what we get is not reciprocal and that there's, there's a differential there. And what, how, I mean, you as the chief marketing operator for the NNPC, how is that being handled and what is, what is responsible for that and who oversees that? Thank you. Senator Dilo Malay. Mr. President, my very respected colleagues, Dino Milai, Kogi West. Mr. President, sitting as chair, my colleagues, I want to start by congratulating my brother and friend. And I make bold to say one of the very few exceptional square pegs in square holes, nominee from Mr. President, who also I congratulate as one of the nominees without EFCC or corruption baggage. Mr. Nominee, I, I, distinguished colleagues, all the nominees went through security clearance, and if anyone has any EFCC case, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria provides for innocence until proven guilty. So none of our nominees is a convict provides for innocence until proven guilty. So none of our nominees is a convicted person. Can go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have not pronounced corruption and conviction, but some are undergoing investigation, and that is what I'm saying. Mr. Nomini, I want to say without fear or favor that I quite appreciate your response on the issue of pipeline vandalization. Um, I wanted to ask you, but I'm very satisfied with your response, and especially with the international best practices that you are acquainted with, hoping that that will be adopted if you become uh, the Minister of Petroleum. And we pray the Almighty God that God will touch the President and anoint the President to make you a substantive minister. Mr. Nomini, the issue of crude oil production, we have problem with knowing exactly what is our crude oil production volume per day. And this has been shrouded in a lot of secrecy and is one of the reasons responsible for major corruption in this uh, country. As minister and someone that we know who behaves with every sincerity of purpose of heart and commitment, how will you use technology like it is used in Venezuela, in Saudi Arabia, in Iran, and even in our neighboring Ghana? Technology is used to determine the volume of production per day. What will you do if, by the grace of God, you become the Minister of Petroleum to check and give Nigeria first hand information of what the volume of our production, crude oil production per day, is? And lastly, the question has been asked by my brother Matthew Rogedi, but I want to emphasize that apart from procurement in this country, the greatest corruption in Nigeria is in the oil sector. And the larger percentage of that comes from the subsidy regime. I want to buttress and elucidate that we will want you to prefer what is your understanding of the subsidy regime and what is your position on subsidy. Thank you. Senator Saeed Al Ghali. Thank you, Mr. President. Sitting as chair. My name is Saeed Wal Ghali, and I represent Gombenos Senatorial District of Gombe State. The Honorable Nomini, you are aware that the federal government has embarked on poverty alleviation schemes, such as Empower, 
market money, trader money. But yet, the poverty level is still extremely high in the country. What do you advise the Federal Executive Council? Is that what more need to be done to alleviate poverty in Nigeria? You know in our campaign, we have promised Nigerians that we are taking the country to the next level. Thank you. Senator Ibrahim Mohamed Bowen. Thank you, Mr. President, distinguished colleagues. My name is Ibrahim Mohamed Bowen, representing Yobe's House. Mr. Nobili, I want to deviate from the questions, the pattern of questions being asked by my colleagues. According to your CV, you have been in the public service for at least 10 years. So, Mr. Nobini, you are aware recently the President inaugurated the Northeast Development Committee Commission. So, if you find yourself as a minister in the supervising the commission, what will you do to enhance the efficiency of the commission? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. You can respond, please. Okay. I would like to start with um, the e subsidy issue, which is very topical. Sub subsidy or crude oil product, product uh, importation and distribution is a commercial activity. It is it's an economic activity based on commerce. And for profit, it's profit oriented. Nobody goes to the market and buy products to come and dash. And product imposition is highly um, capital intensive. You, you need at least $20 million to, uh, to import three or four cargos. No, but no Nigerian bank will give you $20 million without a guarantee. So if I, for instance, a man to import, I go to import, I borrow money from the bank, go to import products to distribute in Nigeria, and then my landing cost of this product is $8 per barrel, or per liter, sorry, per liter. And the PPPRA has a template which says you cannot sell, you cannot land at $8, it's $6 per, 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 per liter. There's a lacuna of $2. Who pays for that? I'm into business to make money. So I borrow money from the bank. I need to pay bank loan, back the loan and interest. So, and then you are saying, I cannot, and I, you, I landed this product in Nigeria below cost, below your, your template price. Somebody has to pay. So the solution to that, for me, is re revamp our refineries. Make us produce more. If we produce more crude, we don't need to, more products. If our refineries work well, and we produce, for instance, for that part, I will start uh, um, uh, uh, um, refining three steam cream, two cream stew, uh, three, uh, crude streams. Kaduna tree, crude streams, and other. So we have more products locally. It will not be attractive to go and import any longer. You will see at that point, um, subsidy will disappear gradually by itself without government pronouncing it or the National Assembly proscribing it. It will disappear because it's, it's, it's easier for me to go to Kaduna, buy products, and sell within the Kaduna or North, North Central Zone than to go to America or Europe and import commodity with, a, with, 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 with shortfalls, which nobody will pay me for. So. People will be, we will be, the market will be flooded with products, and then we will not have reasons to have a shortfall between PPPRA pricing unit and the landing cost. There will be no landing cost, no longer. So you have no reason to ask for subsidy because nobody will even listen because it is available. The refineries are working full blast. Products are available. If you want to do crude oil trade, uh, products trade, go to PPR, go to Warwick Refinery, go to bon, uh, uh, Portaco Refinery, go to Kaduna Refinery, buy the products and sell. And at that time, you can even liberalize. But the, the margin will not be as high as importing uh, the import margin. So if you, import, if you are buying at this price and selling at the X price, and the margin is this low for you for, as profit, you don't need to go import and have a lacuna there where you cannot pay, you have a bank loan to pay, you have, an, uh, you have a, uh, 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 the price shortage to pay. But that's my, my, my solution to, to that one. 
and then four topping senator matt topping you see in the industry there are very many terms which are wrongly used permits me to deviate a little bit somebody says for instance one person is doing bunkering and he says, bunkering is not a crime bunkering just means supplying bunkers to a vessel so when you bring a vessel to load crude oil or anything in a, in a country, or if you own a vessel, every port you go to, you have to have agents or managers there who put, supply water, supply cigarettes, supply drinks, and supply food for the, for the crew. When you move sail from Lagos to Sierra Leone, you stop at Sierra Leone, there are some new bunkers are put because the crew, crew has to be fed, crew has to drink, crew has to smoke crew has to bath. So you need to supply them water, fresh water, supply them food, supply them drinks, supply them cigarettes and alcohol. They are in the vessel for 30 days in, on the high sea. They need to survive. So this is called bunkering. Nigerians misconstrue it to mean stealing. It is not, bunkering is not stealing. It's a legal and legitimate business. It's like you buy an aircraft. Distinguished senator, you have an aircraft. Your aircraft is flying from here to another place. You must have an agent in that town who cleans your aircraft when they land, he cleans the aircraft, puts food, puts water, um, and checks tires, and check calibration before it goes to the next flight. So it's a legitimate business. Topping, I would assure you, is, is wrongly used in our country. Be Topping means stealing, and adding more volume to what is, has been calibrated. It's padding, as it were. However, it, it, it's, it's hard to open, happen from here, because, you see, there are 19 agencies at the loading port. We call it terminals. At the loading terminals, there are 19 agencies. There are all of them, custom, immigration, and all of the 19 agencies. When I was there, now, I don't, if I were there today, I would add one more agency, Inland Revenue Services. They should join them. So these agencies are all there to check how much crude is loaded in a vessel, whether the quantity is X, and record it, and report to a group called Naiti. 90 because checks that on a monthly basis and gives quarterly reports to the presidency. So, for topping, it is difficult to just add to it because these agencies are out. You can't brought 19 agencies. You can maybe set compromise two agencies, but you can't compromise 19 agencies who are there at the same time loading. It's, it's, it's quite difficult. I'm not saying it's not possible to do this. The IOCs could do that because we do not have the technology to monitor the molecules from the beginning, from the wellhead to the end. We don't have that technology. But we can have it if we ad address it. We can have the technology. But we don't have it now. So the IOCs determine what, crude, what volume of crude to declare and what volume of crude we got because we don't have the control head. So if I were in charge, I would ask all oil companies, both local and international, to establish a control room. I saw recently, you, I'm sure most of us saw it in uh, Saudi own. It's a big room like this. From the molecule, from the production head, every molecule is accounted for. As it goes onto the line, until it gets to the market, it's accounted for. We can do that in Nigeria. It's technology. It's just setting up a, setting up a, a room like this. It's like what you call a war room. So if you said that... Yeah. The... The DSP, Senator Ross Okoji Oko, Senator Geshe Mbasi, and Senator Sandy Ono in that order. Thank you, Mr. President. Respected colleagues. First, I want to thank Mr. President for this nomination. This is a very good nomination. It's a known quantity. Uh, as we say in law, this will be a fellow who knows where the bodies are buried. Uh, I want to congratulate you, uh, Jedi Akba, for this nomination. I don't have a lot of questions for you. I have heard 
and seeing the mood of my colleagues who say you ought to take a bar and go. And I subscribe to that. Uh, but before we get to that stage, I want to commend you for the education you've given to us. We respect to the interlink between the subsidy regime and our refineries. I have always taken the position that there is no need for us to continue with this subsidy. All, that, all we needed to do was fix the refineries, and that's what you've told us today. I have seen many people in NMPC, in your circle, who think otherwise because they believe that we ought to continue with this subsidy uh, uh, regime. So I thank you very much. I, I pray that uh, Mr. President will put you in a position where these ideas, you know, could be put to use. Now, having said that, let me also add, I come from the Niger Delta. There are a lot of us who believe that most of the oil companies that are doing business in that neighborhood, they, are, they ought to have their offices, their headquarters in that same neighborhood so that they could provide uh, employment opportunities for these people. Even in this Senate, and I believe in the House of Reps, many a time, a lot, uh, several motions have been moved along those lines. Uh, but to date, nothing has happened. More specifically, there's an issue that is raging right now. Mr. Nominee, please listen to me. There's an issue that is raging right now in Delta. And that will do with uh, Nigerian gas. They are also threatening to move their headquarters from Wari Efru in Delta State elsewhere. I am seeking your commitment. I didn't say where it's going. Elsewhere. I am seeking your commitment today as a nominee that in the event you become the Minister of State Petroleum as somebody else has conversed, will you commit to me, I must say commit to us, will you commit to me as a representative of the people of Delta Central that you will not superintend over the movement of Nigerian, oil, Nigerian gas from uh, Efru elsewhere? And would you also commit to see to it that those companies that are doing businesses there in uh, Delta rather than take their headquarters elsewhere, that they also ought to come back to the Niger Delta area to provide jobs for our teaming you, uh, unemployed youth. Thank you very much. I congratulate you for this nomination. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Yes. Um, my brother, you know, if and when he's confirmed petroleum resources, he's just one person. That can be a policy of government or this Senate could pass resolutions and follow the implementation through. But I fear that even if because he wants to be confirmed, commits to those things you ask him to commit, it takes more than him to keep those. So I, I want you to be a little bit lenient with him, that he will work to ensure. <laughs> so so, so you, you should know what to say about this. <laughs> Senator Rosoko. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. Distinguished colleagues, my name is Rose Oko, Cross River North and the constituency of the nominee. Mr. President, sitting as the chair, distinguished colleagues, you would all agree with me that Mr. Jerry Godi Jerry Abba is a technocrat for excellence that brings a lot to the table in a very strategic and critical area of our economy. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, I would like to personally thank Mr. President of this country for nominating somebody like himself from Kosovo State. 
Notwithstanding the very many and eminently qualified people from that state, he stands out, especially in his area of specialization. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, from the various responses that he has given, I do not need to think that I need to speak so much more about Mr. Gaudi Jadiaba. And because of the responses that he has given, very eloquently given to the various issues of expertise. Yes. I would like to urge this hallowed chamber, yes. Carry. our very distinguished Carry. colleagues, Carry. that for a nominee Carry. that brings so much to the table, for a nominee that will be a major part of the solution to the problems that we have in that sector, Carry. that you take a bow and go. Chikina. Take a bow. Can we then assume that you, are, you have spoken for your other colleagues from Cross River? Senator Sandy Ono is raising his hand. All right. Okay, yes, Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Geshe Basi. I am the very proud senator representing Cross River South in this ninth assembly. Today I'm very proud because Cross River State has brought to this chamber a nominee that has clearly demonstrated huge capacity in his area of expertise. Several questions have been thrown at him and he has been extremely articulate in the way in which he has offered solutions and answers to all these questions. He is a man of capacity. Tremendous. And we are proud. So, suggestion made by my distinguished colleague, Rosoko, that this gentleman, this man of huge capacity and talent, this man who has demonstrated not only knowledge, but technical know-how in his area of expertise should take a bow in this chamber and leave. Carry. I so Carry. submit. Carry. 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 Senator Sandu, or no, you can second the seconding. <laughs> Mr. Mr. President, sitting as chair, is a very good man. Uh, Mr. President, sitting as chair, distinguished colleagues. Behold Prince Godi Chediagba. He is a prince of the ancient Utuwa kingdom of Northern Cross River region. His father, Uti Jedi Agba, is 57 years and counting on the throne as paramount ruler, one of the oldest serving paramount rulers in Nigeria. They were inculcated with the right values and mores growing up. This certainly has seen him through the civil service where he has showcased himself as a man of integrity and property, rising, as he has told us, to the enviable height of General Manager Crude in NMPC. He retired meritoriously. Mr. Chairman, when his matter was brought before us in the Cross River Senate Caucus, we didn't find it difficult accepting that this was beautiful. Even when we are all PDP senators and it's an APC stakeholder who attempted with the likes of Senator John Owa Ewaneno and Victor Ndomegba to do the impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, sir, the roles of the Senate, our own Senator Rosuko, described him as an okay guy. So we present to you an okay guy a gentleman of cosmopolitan broad-mindedness. God has the capacity of relating to all Nigerians without bias, regardless of ethnicity, geography, or religion. He is ministerial. He will do well in that office. As you can see, he has the right head sitting on the proper neck. And because the source that is good for Uganda as good for the goose, it's also good for the gander. I know that you would allow him to do the needful. Take a bow and go. Thank you.
Well, before he responds to some of the questions, excuse me, I'm tempted, I'm tempted honestly to propose that we crown Senator Sandu Ono as the orator of the Senate. <laughs> So some issues were raised, you can respond, including the, the commitments in court I will, I will, I will from the DA. <laughs> so you can respond Mr. as quickly. President, am I protected? I'm protected. So I, see, I hide under your protection. <laughs> I will not promise what I cannot deliver. However, I would like to make a comment. We are in an economy which is struggling to, to, to survive, it's thriving. We have spent so much money in the NGC project. What sense would it make to move it from that place to any place else? What happens to the, to the infrastructure? What happens to the money is wasted? I don't think anybody is contemplating that in its correct sense. I do not think so. Mr. Uh, Distinguished Senator, I think you should uh, check your facts right again. Nobody can contemplate that in its correct senses. We have put in so much money. Besides, sir. I give an example of the pipeline in Europe, for instance. The pipeline for, that Russia takes gas from Russia through to, to Europe, it passes through Syria. When the problem was between Syria and you know who, what did the, 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 the Damascus do? He rushed to Putin and said, Guy, I'm under threat. They're going to kill me now. Protect me. And Putin just locked the pipe. Speak to the mic. And, and then there was no flow of gas to Europe, and men were dropping dead, the old men were dying, anyhow it was winter. We have laid the pipeline, we have worked on the West African gas pipeline from uh, uh, Wari up to the whole west coast of Africa, which may link up to Morocco and to Europe, which will bring us more revenue. Why do we block it now? It, simple economics teaches us that you should search an industry to be close to the source of raw material. So why do we do that? I don't contemplate that happening. I would not pretend over that if I had an opportunity to. But I'm hiding under the president, the Senate president. Thank you. Well, well distinguished uh, colleagues, for those that had wanted to ask uh, their questions, and if I indicated, and there are about 10 of our colleagues, unfortunately, we have run out of time, and also the mood is that uh, the nominee has answered most of the questions put to him and therefore you should take a bow and go. Yes. Is it the view of this Senate that he takes a bow and go? Yes. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the eyes have been. you can take a bow. has just passed through his own screening. But it's very significant to know that the nominee is a technocrat who has actually explained vividly